Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. We're going to take a look at how we can export an image for uploading to social media. OK, I'm going to select an image and just before I do upload it, I'm just going to take that into the develop module. OK, I'm just going to check uh, the sharpening of this image and also some uh, output settings. OK, so the sharpening I've currently got at uh, 35. Now, if I do want that to, to appear as sharp as possible, uh, what I'd need to do is to zoom in uh, to 1-1 one, one to gain that uh, amount of sharpening uh, or maybe also use this little dialogue here uh, which is always at the 1-1 one, one magnification. Now I could possibly take this uh, a little bit sharper so I'm just going to push that up to maybe 60 or so. Okay, now what happens with uh, the sharpening process, it will sharpen all areas of the image. And what we can do is we can protect some of these smoother tones. And we do that by holding down the Alt or Option key on the keyboard and then raising the masking slider. Now the masking slider allows us to restrict the sharpening to just the, uh, the edges. All of the areas that are now black are being prevented from being sharpened by that sharpening process. So this will help keep the smoother areas uh, free from artifacts. Okay, let's uh, zoom back out now that I'm happy with the sharpening output. A couple of things that I always uh, finally do after doing some localized editing is just to double check uh, the whites and the blacks. Uh, now this isn't imperative that we do this on every image, but I'd certainly say I do this on most of my images. Okay, I'd like my images to be using the full dynamic range all the way from white right down to black. Now we can do this in a number of ways. You can actually hold down the Alt or Option key whilst adjusting these sliders and this will show you any clipping. For instance if I have that white slider too high we're going to be clipping some of the highlights. I can drag that back manually until we don't see any of that luminance clipping. If you just see a small amount of color that can be associated to saturation clipping um, which I'll go into in on a, a subsequent movie. I won't go into that here. Okay the other way of setting this automatically is to hold down the shift key and just double click either the whites or blacks and that will allow Lightroom to automatically set those blacks and whites inside the image. So let's just hold down the shift key, double click the blacks and you'll see that it pushes it a little bit further down than I had it set manually. I'll also do the same with the whites. Okay, and that's coming down a good deal further than I had it set. Uh, this is going to make sure that there's no saturation clipping. These are just automated ways of setting these. So if you prefer manually, just remember, hold down the Alt or Option key and drag those sliders in order to manually set that whites and the blacks in your image. Okay, let's go back to the library module. And now I'm ready to export to social media. So with the image selected, I'm just going to hit the export button here. Okay, now um, when in the export dialog, uh, Lightroom hasn't given us uh, the optimum settings for uploading an image, maybe to either Flickr or Facebook. So we're going to have to choose uh, all of the settings ourselves. We can choose one of the Lightroom presets, such as for email, hard drive, and then we can just override some of those settings. Now, um, if we are creating presets, one of the useful um, presets is to, to be able to choose the folder where this image is going to later. So as we hit export, it'll ask us where do we want to save that image to. Uh, if you don't want to use that and you don't want that um, to slow the workflow down, we can just uh, select the desktop here and the image will automatically be saved to the desktop. Okay, I'm not going to put it in a subfolder. Okay, um, we can rename that file if we want to. Uh, I'm going to keep the current name. Okay, we've got some video settings and obviously this isn't a video. Uh, here we've got some important settings, JPEG obviously. Uh, color space should be sRGB for the web. Quality down here is very low and I would set that up to maybe 90. Now you're not going to get too much extra quality by setting it all of the way to 100. Uh, so 90 is sufficient for high quality images going to social media. Now again in the next box, image size, uh, this is quite a small image. Okay, It's uh, 640 pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the long edge and I'm going to choose 2048 pixels. 
Okay, now this is the optimum uh, file size for images going up to a medium such as Facebook. Resolution really isn't important for images going up for social media. A resolution is more associated with printing resolutions when the images is going to paper, so we can safely ignore um, that um, specification there. Now one of my favorite settings that is unchecked, but I would check this in that is sharpen for screen standard. Uh, when we're coming down from high megapixel images captured with our cameras, they will soften up a bit as we're saving a much smaller image. Okay, another thing that I would typically like to do is in the metadata, instead of choosing copyright only, I will choose all camera and camera raw info. Okay, so um, we can do that or we can choose all metadata. Now, um, couple of the boxes that stay checked is to remove the person info and also remove location info. Especially important if the images are coming from maybe mobile um, phones and we're not wanting um, the viewers to see where these images were actually captured. Okay, so watermarking, uh, watermarking, I typically don't watermark images for social media. Um, that is my personal preference, but you can actually overwrite that if necessary. Now, post-processing, this is what happens after we've exported the image. I don't need to see the um, uh, finder window to show me where I've saved it to. I'll be able to find it on the desktop at a later stage when I'm ready to upload it. So I'll choose do nothing. Now that's quite a lot of settings to adjust, um, the, but the great thing is we only have to adjust them once because we can create a preset here simply by clicking on the word add. And I'll just call this um, 2048 and call it Facebook perhaps. Okay, so now we've got that and it'll typically go into user presets, but I can create myself a new folder such as social media. Okay, and those presets will go there and I'll hit create and you can see now anytime I'm coming into this dialogue I'll be able to um, uh, put uh, just click on that social media and we'll be able to um, uh, um, acquire all of these settings that we've set up in this workflow and now I can simply hit export. Another way of pushing to social media is not actually to save the image out onto the hard drive at all, but just push a lower resolution up via the publishing services here. Let's just uh, collapse this uh, panel um, where we've got my all my import folders and we'll just take a closer look at these publishing services. Now typically um, Lightroom comes uh, preloaded with a couple of publishing services um, with, that are ready to set up but you can actually find more of these publishing services as plugins uh, for Lightroom. Let's just set up a Facebook because I do have um, a Facebook and a Flick account so I'll just click on that setup account. Now in order to go out to uh, Facebook and I'll just uh, call this Facebook 2048 so I know what size images are going up to Facebook. I'm going to have to authorize this before um, I actually can set this up. Now I've actually authorized this but here's the button authorize on Facebook. This will take you out of Lightroom, open up a Facebook window and uh, ask you if you would like to give permission for Lightroom to publish images directly to Facebook. Okay, you can uh, change an account here if once we've set this up and you can also remove authorization uh, if you no longer want to use this service. Now we have the option here of choosing the album that we're uploading to or just pushing it directly to your timeline photos. So there's a lot of flexibility here about where these images will be stored uh, in the folder structure of your Facebook account. Now what we have here is the Facebook title of the image. Now we can use the, uh, uh, the existing uh, title um, and if that is empty, I haven't actually put a title into this image, it'll just uh, define default to the file name. Okay, so we, we can of course uh, rename those files but I'm not going to write that uh, into this publishing service and uh, we've also got uh, quality settings again here. So JPEG, uh, we don't have the option to push images to um, uh, Facebook in any other file format. Uh, again we've got that uh, quality setting. Here I've um, set up uh, 80, I'm quite happy with that at 80. And also the long edge, um, resize to fit but I'm going to raise 
raise that to 2048 again. This is an optimum size uh, where we are going to get the best quality of images going up to Facebook. And again, I'm going to hit that sharpen for screen standard just to make sure uh, um, my images appear as sharp as possible on Facebook. There is a little bit of a caveat here in that um, Facebook does use heavy amounts of compression and so the images aren't going to look as crisp as they do on your screen and there's no way around that unless you want to use other social media uh, platforms such as uh, uh, Google Plus or uh, Flickr or 500px etc. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, save. Okay, now um, Facebook um, has created a little um, um, upload for me. It's called Facebook 2048. I can actually create multiple um, versions of this Facebook publishing um, uh, uh, feature here uh, with different resolutions if I required. Okay, so now it's just a simple matter of just dragging that image onto my uh, Facebook upload we'll see the one there. If I uh, double click we can see this is ready to publish. All I have to do now is, and it's going up to the timeline photos, is all I have to do is click the publish button and that will be pushed directly um, to my Facebook uh, account without having to save to the desktop first. Now that is also a great feature for Lightroom. Okay, now uh, Flickr uh, would be slightly different for me if I double click the setup for Flickr and I'm going to have to authorize this in this instance. So I'm just going to click authorize. Okay, and we'll just click on that and it's waiting for a response from uh, Flickr. So I'm going to have to give that. Okay, I'll authorize it and that should take me back um, to the Lightroom publishing manager. Okay, pretty much it's going to be the same things that I used before. I'm not going to rename the files. Uh, the file settings are still JPEG. Again, I've got to push that quality. I might go up as high as 90 in this instance. Now, resize to fit. Uh, typically, I'll push images to Flickr a lot higher resolution. And again, I'll go for the long edge. And I'm going to choose uh, 3000. 840 pixels. This is going to be 4K. It's typically uh, double that of uh, HD, which is 1920 pixels. Again, I'm going to hit the sharpen for screen, standard, uh, all metadata. Again, again with the remove person info and location info uh, checked. And uh, we also got this additional uh, category down here is, uh, is it going um, private or public? Uh, this is going to be a public setting here, uh, safe images, and it's a photo. So I'm just going to put up here is it's my public uh, publishing profile and just hit save. Okay, so again, we would just uh, push that over to my photo stream and uh, just uh, double click on that and uh, hit publish. And uh, that's the way we can quickly um, create images optimized for our social media.